Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique revolutionary sword, Shem Drown Sword. To acquire this weapon we will need to be on the quest called the Gilded Grasshopper. There are two ways to acquire this quest, the first is to complete Unlikely Valentine, which is an early part of the main quest and will bring Nick Valentine back into his detectives agency in Diamond City. So of course, once that's complete we want to head to Diamond City and then head to Valentine's detective agency. Provided that Nick's back in the office, we will find this case file on top of this small filing cabinet, the Marty Bullfinch case file. Upon picking it up we need to listen to Marty's holotape, and after doing so the quest will begin the Gilded Grasshopper. To find the Gilded Grasshopper we will need to head to Faneuil Hall, which is located to the northeast of Diamond City. We will then need to make our way to the rooftop. To do this we will need to head through the building and just a warning it is filled with super mutants, so be sure to come prepared to deal with them. The second way to begin the quest is to skip all of that stuff I just showed you and come straight to this rooftop. Once you pick up the golden grasshopper, the quest will begin. So once we grab ourselves the gilded grasshopper, we need to read the note, food for the grasshopper, and find Shem Drown's grave, which can be found in this graveyard, which on the map is located just next to Pickman's gallery, or to the southeast of Bunker Hill. This area is populated by a couple of ghouls, so once again, come prepared for that. Once at the graveyard, just head up the stairs and turn to the right, and Shem Drown's grave is over here. Once we dig it up, we will have completed the Gilded Grasshopper, and in front of us will be the open coffin of Shem Drown, with his body and belongings inside. And as we can see, laying on top of him is the Shem Drown Sword. And just like first aids, be sure to grab it. And before we go over the weapon's base stats, as always, I have reduced my character's special attribute stats to 1. I have no bubblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character, so what we will be seeing is the absolute minimum base stats of Shem Drown Sword. Shem Drown Sword only has one mod slot. In this slot we could add the Electrified modification, which adds 15 electrical damage, however the Stun Pack modification adds 25 electrical damage and also adds a chance to stun the enemy, which is of course obviously superior. Now after modifying it, time to look at the stats. It has a base ballistic damage of 17, it now has a base electrical damage of 25, a base radiation damage of 9, its speed is is medium, its weight is 3, and its value is 350. As we can see up the top in the middle, Shem Drown Sword targets take radiation damage. So Shem Drown Sword is of course a unique revolutionary sword, swinging in a diagonal downward slash and a horizontal swipe. A downward chop serves as its power attack. As you may have noticed during the modification of Shem Drown Sword, it did not have the option for the serrated blade modification. I find it as strange as you do, although luckily the stun pack modification we put on it is actually better than the serrated blade modification, so we're not really missing out on anything there. Although as we know the targets take radiation damage, and sadly it's actually less damage than a simple legendary sword with an irradiated effect. Also irradiated weapons in general aren't as useful as some of the other legendary effects, because especially in the wasteland there are a lot of enemies that have radiation resistances, so this bonus that you would be getting is most of the time resisted, at least to some degree. So with that aside, in actual use I found it to be an okay weapon. Its effect isn't as powerful as a standard irradiated revolutionary sword. Its base damage is okay with the stun pack modification, it is a lot better with the extra electrical damage and of course the chance to stun the enemies, which I actually found happens in just about every fight. Unless you kill the enemy straight away, which is incredibly rare with this weapon. Overall its damage is, again, okay mediocre, its swing speed is medium, which I actually found a little bit slow while swinging, I felt like it was quite a small light weapon and it didn't really swing as swiftly as it would in real life. And I know it's a game and real life scenarios don't exactly apply to things in the game, but just swinging a tiny toothpick sword around felt quite slow. So no, this sword is not your one hit wonder, it's not your solution to everything, however it's not bad, you can pretty much come here at any point in the game and get it, so it is an excellent starting weapon for any melee characters. Aside from that, if you're into role playing and you have some kind of futuristic wasteland pirate you want to play, until you get your specific legendary revolutionary sword that you're looking for, this is an excellent substitute and stand-in weapon for the time being. And although you may not even want to use it at all, it is of course a unique weapon, so all of us collectors out there will be sure to go and grab it. And if anyone's interested, the Shem Drown sword of course belonged to Shem Drown. Deacon Shem Drown was a colonial coppersmith and tin 
plate worker in Boston, Massachusetts, and was America's first documented weather vane maker. He is most famous for the grasshopper weather vane atop Faneuil Hall, a well-known symbol of Boston. So there is quite a bit of real-life influence put behind this Shem Drown. The fact that he was a coppersmith and tin plate worker is also the reason there were various metal ingots found in his coffin. I'm sure he was an excellent guy, it's a Shem he drowned. Also, what do you get when you put the Viking language in a jacuzzi? Well, just like this sword, you get a sparred rune. And here it is, Shem Drowned Sword in action. <laughs> And there you have it, there is the guide of how to acquire Shem Drown Sword. And how it's a little bit less useful in the wasteland, but more useful for cosplay or character builds. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This, of course, will take you to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist, where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description of this video where it will be frequently updated with new Fallout 4 Guide links that I upload. Once again, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.